Folks, welcome in to BetUS TV. I'm Kyle Proviance. He is Kenny McAndrews with another kick-ass shirt. I tried to bring a little heat today, and then you come with the Ninja Turtles. I love that. And, of course, he is the incomparable base winner. We are your Major League Baseball team for Wednesday, April 3rd. And, fellas, I knew pretty early. I went ahead and went against your Phillies again yesterday, right, back in my Reds. And that, do you guys ever have this where just you overlook something, you don't realize something? And I hadn't realized that Bryce Harper didn't have a hit yet. And I was on the phone with my buddy and I said, this is not good. He's hitting a home run for sure. Well, he turns around and stomps on, especially that first one was beautiful. Yeah. Three home runs yesterday, the Phillies cruise. But does that ever happen to you guys where you're like, you get this sinking feeling, something happens in the pregame and you're like, Oh God, I didn't realize it. Oh, I thought you were talking in general, if you overlook something and I, oh. I try to overlook as much as I can, particularly when it comes to chores around the house or some kind of mm. honey list I have. And so, so I, I, I don't get anxious about it. I have to enjoy it, but my wife doesn't. <laughs> Kenny, it happens, right? Like sometimes it happens with me in football a lot too. Like pregame will be happening and you'll see like the weather's different than what you thought. It just something gets you and you get this sinking feeling. I almost wanted to turn the game off before it started because I knew it was dead. I, I feel like in the NFL, if it's like pregame and they have somebody warming up and it's like he and his wife just celebrated the the, the birth of their first child. I'm like, oh, he's scoring today. Mm -hmm. He's 100% mm -hmm. scoring today. The birth of the first child. Always, well, I'm always of two minds about that. So I'm always looking at them closely like, has this dude gotten any sleep? Uh, you know, is he, you know, we did the nagging wife rap last year, you know, the nagging wife theory that uh, Jay gave us. And so there's a lot of that that goes into it as well. Uh, let's do a little house cleaning here before we get into the records and the games. First things first, thank you guys all so, so much for watching. We really appreciate it. We have the best chat box in the business. We really do. They drive the show. We really appreciate you guys. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, get your questions in the chat box. After we're done going over the games, we got six of them we're going over. We'll answer any question you got. Uh, they love your shirt, by the way. Again, Kenny just killing it with the with the Ninja Turtle shirt. Uh, Jack J. Palmer's getting a chubby, he says. So I think we can say chubby <laughs> on the air. We can say chubby. I haven't called it I mean, chubby. I think if the chat box makes uh, sophomoric sexual illusions, it's okay. Because that's what, I mean, we're here for the chat box, right? That's right. And, and it really makes things easy on me because it's not my fault, right, when that happens. It's just me, you know, listening to the people. And I, indeed, am a man of the people. What do you got, Kenny? My problem is I've, I've burned my two best shirts are – our second week of the season. Like it's going to be downhill from here unless I go on a shopping spree. I mean, I love that Ninja Turtle shirt. Obviously I'm a, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of the heroes and a half shell turtle power. I watched all, that video game one quarter. I could dominate the whole thing. And they actually have an old retro one at this little pizza joint here. They have the old Ninja Turtle arcade game. I find myself hopping in there every now and, who's and your, then. Just real, we got to, we'll, we'll kill it here. Who's your turtle. If you got to pick a turtle, who's your guy? Uh, I mean, when I was young, I always liked Michelangelo, but when it comes down to it, I'm a Donatello guy because I'm kind of a nerd. So I, I love me some Donnie, and I think he's, you know, I, Leo's a good leader, but Donatello's the one that really gets, you know, they need the technology, especially in this day and age. To me, the most valuable turtle is indeed Donatello. That's why, that's but, why you're uh, the host. You know ball. It's it's Donatello. It's always Donatello. <laughs> yes, Donatello. Thanks for saying that. Again, we do appreciate you guys. Get your questions out in the chat box. Lots of weather issues today, too. We'll go over that a little bit. Uh, let's go over our records. Jump into the game. Tough day yesterday for the show. The base winner rap was killed by Garrett Crochet. I think it's time to start talking about this kid. Um, Garrett Crochet looks unbelievable. Of course, Bryce Harper poo-pooed all over me. And uh, the twins looked uh, terrible. Well, here's what happens is that if I start bagging on a pitcher too much, they just pitch out. The, the reverse jinx is still live, so I'm going to be very careful how I talk about some of these bad pitchers because I don't know what I do. But I certainly – it's like that uh, movie with uh, Dane Cook where he like – dates the girl and they get married afterwards or, or something like that. You know, I feel like that's what I am to these. Good, good luck, Chuck. Is that what that is? Good luck, Chuck. That's it. Good luck, yeah. Chuck. What, what what a charming little ditty that movie is. And I feel like good luck, Chuck, with these bad pitchers uh, already this season. Uh, let's get to the first game on the docket here. 9-11, We've got Cole, Bilbo, Reagans, and the Royals at plus 150. Base winner's neighbor and shopping buddy Corbin Burns at minus 170. Total of seven, juice to the over a little bit at minus 120. B-Dub, let's start with you here. So, look, to me, uh, 
Corbin Burns' weighted OPS against this lineup is insane, a 517 weighted OPS over two years. Cole Reagans, I think, is very good. Uh, makes me nervous. We do have some weather issues here. Orioles, minus 120 on the run line in the first five, but I'm getting them a plus 115 as a double result. If they win the first five, I do think they have the better bullpen. I, I don't think that's there's a whole lot of uh, controversy there. So why not take the 35 cents here and take the double result at plus 115? What does the model say here, Royals, Orioles? Yeah, it's a, a couple good points you made, Kyle. Uh, first of all, with the bullpen ratings, I have Baltimore not as high as you would think at 13th, but Kansas City's 26th in baseball. So, so I do agree with you there. The uh, the Orioles have a better bullpen. Uh, the other thing, and I think maybe this is important when you're playing these early season games, and uh, I didn't really, admittedly, take into account the weather uh, yesterday uh, in that Chicago game. It was miserable. I mean, I'm watching the game made me feel cold. And so I think you got to be careful on, on some of this, uh, some of these weather uh, starts. And it, it begs the question on why, why are we starting in, in April in these cold weather cities? Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe they could, you know, have it. I guess it would create somewhat of a competitive disadvantage if all the cold weather teams started or most of them started on the road but hey how about how about coming to arizona how about playing in arizona for the first couple weeks of the season i'd be all for that but keep in mind on that as far as this game goes uh, i've got it priced at minus 165 both pitchers tremendous from a strikeout percentage standpoint uh raggins at 31.6 uh, percent i think that's good uh burns is even better at 32.2 percent so a lean for me a little bit to the under um, but then you got to wonder too about these weather games. If you have an under and it's two nothing in the eighth inning and they call the game, you lose, you don't lose your bet, but you get refunded on it. And so, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. And, and for me, yeah. a little bit too early in the season, uh, I, I'd like to play more totals, uh, uh, particularly when I can, I can get more of a gauge uh, on the weather, Kyle. Absolutely. And look, just going over the weather, Kenny, real quick, we have weather issues in Baltimore, in Philly, in Chicago, in Washington, in New York, and again in Chicago. So quite a few games affected by the weather. But oftentimes I think, OK, the weather just stinks and they're not going to play it. And then I turn it on and not a, not a drop falls. If you looked at that Phillies Reds game yesterday, the weather was terrible. It was drizzling for the for most of the first five innings. And it didn't really affect Bryce Harper any. So when you hit it, it still goes. But uh, for me, what do you think of the Orioles here? I know I like Cole Reagans a lot. There's certainly some upset potential here. But uh, the way Corbin Burns looked early, the way he profiles, I'm going to take the double on the Orioles. Any thoughts on this one? I just both pitchers scare me. I mean, I'm a I'm a big Cole Reagans guy, so it's just it's why I didn't I didn't, I didn't lean aside here. I think gun to my head, I would go Baltimore. But for me, I'm I'm just staying away. Uh, if you want a fun angle here, I'm not doing it. it. Even this is even too insane for my blood. But the wind is blowing literally straight in from from the outfield in Baltimore. Here, there's a lot of speed across both these teams here. If you want to maybe throw some shekels on somebody to hit a triple in this game, there's probably four or five guys that had the speed to do it, and they they, they catch they catch the right bounce off that wall in uh, mm -hmm. in right field. I, I just I think the wind's going to be keeping everything in the ballpark here. So if you want to take a, a you know, a 25 to one stab on like Bobby Witt to hit a triple or, or something like that. This, this could be the game to do it. Yeah. Uh, triples. That's an interesting uh, play. I like triples and it's, it's weird how few triples are hit. I mean, it's yeah. just so rare. What, what B dub, what I do. Well, you know, the governor's on the show, but when you I'm said kind of uh, triples, I, I, I can only think is. of one thing. I can't hear it. out of your mouth. Kyle, you, you off the grid? You can't. Can you hear me? Ah, of course, of course. I, things are being weird here. I don't, yeah, I can hear you. I, things are weird here on the Skype. I don't know how it is on the show, but things right here have all like froze. I don't know what's going on there. You're I'm just gonna, gonna keep going. So uh, yeah, technical something something uh, weird going on there. But I'm just gonna keep keep going. I'll get there. Okay, so it's just being weird on the Skype here. So we'll just keep going here for purposes of the show. We're going to lock in the Orioles for me, the double result, and that is going to sit at plus 115. Yeah, I'm completely frozen on the uh, on this production side. So hopefully it's still going on the show. I'll try to uh, give some time and keep talking. But uh, right now I can't see or hear anything 
these guys are doing, Ali. I, I, I can't. It's not moving at all here on the, on uh, my my Skype screen. Let's head to the next game on the docket. Let me pull the odds out because I won't be able to see it flash up here on my end. Nine twenty three, nine twenty four. Um, we have Patrick Sandoval and the Angels. That number is sitting at, and I apologize again for the little bit of a um, delay here getting out. It's at minus 102 right now to Sandoval, minus 108 to A.J. Puck, and the Marlins total here of 8.5 with a little bit of juice to the over at minus 115. So, Kenny, I'm going to shoot this over to you. And uh, I will be right back as I try to come in and unfreeze this. I'll be uh, right back. But, Kenny, let's go to you here. you got to play in this one, Angels-Marlins. I do. So I have this 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 disgusting, sick, weird fetish where uh, I like pitchers that have really good stuff and uh, also apparently can't throw strikes. And that's what I'm going with today. Uh, I already did it with Joe Boyle a couple of days ago. It didn't work. So if, uh, if this bricks on me, I promise I will try to kick this fetish as, as best I can. But – I'm going to I'm going to buy the, the AJ Puck bounce back. Uh, he threw two innings last game. I think he threw a total of like five strikes. He struck out his first batter and then just couldn't do anything after that. Playing the Angels, the Angels strike out a lot. And I'm just I'm buying the upside on this kid. And again, if he comes out there and throws five walks in, in the first inning, he will be banned. And I'll, I'll rethink my uh, my weird pitcher strategy. But I'm, I'm, I'm buying the dip on AJ Puck over five and a half strikeouts plus 116. Yeah, that's interesting. And the Angels do have some strikeouts uh, in that lineup, right, B Dub? I don't know their number exactly, but I believe they're you know there's there's some high volume there. Um, I think everything's fixed here. I appreciate your guys' patience, by the way. I apologize. I don't know what the hell happened there. Damien says my ex is coming back to bite me, and that is uh, most likely that's that's not out of the question. But B Dub, what do you think here? He's got puck over six K. He's getting plus money or six Ks plus. Your Angels here with Sandoval. The Marlins yet to win a baseball game this year. You know, this is a pretty bad game all around. Uh, what do you got here? I, well, I got to rub it in, first of all, because that lo- the team with the bet- worst record in baseball bet, how's that looking right now after five games? Mm. But yeah, I have, not great. I, I got to take every opportunity. Your California Angels, and you see how old I am. I just called mm. them California Angels. Uh, gosh, three and two, they're leading the AL West now. Now, you brought up, an idea about the angels having the uh, strikeout percentage. And it's, it's not what you would consider because I would think too gut feeling that it would be on the higher side. It is, but it's 17th in baseball. Uh, but having said that, I do like Kenny's play. I think it's a really good play. Actually. Uh, you look at, uh, AJ pucks strikeout percentage last one fifty thirty five point six. In fact, there's only a few uh, pitchers in baseball that are that are better since he is in the 98th percentile. Uh, one of the things that was interesting, and Kenny said the guy doesn't throw strikes, but uh, if you look at his last 300 plate appearances, he has he's been okay. His 6.9 percent walk rate, so his BBK is really good too. 0.15. Uh, contrast that with Patrick Sandoval, who's at 0. 0.70. League average is right around 0. 0.40. I think it's 0. 0.385 uh, BB divided by K. Uh, so for those reasons, I I really like Miami here. Uh, the model has Miami priced at minus 245. I did put it out on the card. Wow. I, I just I don't know where this Miami team is, you know, mentally. It just it seems like they can't put it together. Uh, and that's why I didn't make the cut for the show. But I, but I do if I it made a play, and I did make a play on it uh, personally. Uh, I, I, I'm going to go with Miami here. I, I agree with Kenny's analysis about Puck. I think he's he's got some uh, high upside, Kyle. Yeah, if he can stay in the game, right? Like, I mean, he even had I can't remember what it was, but he got pretty close to a strikeout number in the last in his first game, and he got knocked out relatively early. I, I, I didn't think I think in two innings he had he had one or two strikeouts and six walks and he got every single batter to a two strike count. I mean he right. just, it, it, he was he was throwing that, that that sweeper he throws for his knockout pitch and they were just they were just laying off it. So again, I'm buying the bounce back and uh, if we get another two inning busto performance, uh, I'm gonna have to lay off my uh, my pitcher fetish for a bit. Corby joins the chat box, our boy Corby, and of course, make sure you check out the college basketball show uh, if you haven't done so already as they wind down the NCAA tournament. He calls us nerds. Okay, I- I'm old enough to remember last year where we had to teach him how to go to a strip club, right, B-Dub? So, uh, what did he I, say? He, I, I don't mean, know. Anybody, the nerdiest he called guy us nerds. He just came in here and he just, yeah, he just came in and called us nerds, 
And if he's not careful here, I will ask if you remember the photo of Corby last year for the baseball show. Remember how goofy it made him look? <laughs> we will bring that photo back. I swear it. Uh, but <laughs> I, don't think the, I don't think his photo this year, Kyle, is any better with the sweater. I, what's going on with that, Corby? Oh, now, yeah, we're now, we're, now, we're yeah, just, now we're getting me. Now we're just now we're just getting me. personal here. I think Corby's very handsome, by the way. But I will bring back that photo. I swear it. Uh, but for purposes of the show here, and I like this one quite a bit. If Puck can get you know three, four, even if if he just gets into the fourth or fifth inning, I think he's got a good shot to hit this. AJ Puck's six Ks plus sitting at. Plus 118, and Gary Sween nails it. Nerds are the new cool, and that's right. Get, uh, nerds are the new cool, and I appreciate that. I am indeed a huge Star Wars nerd as well. As I've told my dad, went to high school prom with Carrie Fisher, so it's a special place in my heart uh, for uh, for the nerds out there. Much love to the nerds. Let's head to our next game on the docket here, another afternoon game. Love this. 9-15, 9-16, we've got Nick Pavetta and the Red Sox at minus 165. Ross Stripling, a Ross Stripling sighting out there in Oakland at plus 145. Total of eight with a little bit of juice to the under at minus 115. So I don't remember where I started. We'll start with you here, B-Dub. You know that I always bag on Pavetta, and I don't typically back Pavetta. But I have to just eat my crow here and accept the fact that Nick Pavetta is pretty good. And he broke it by my numbers. It's the biggest pitching discrepancy on the card today. Ross Stripling. It's a weighted OPS of nearly 1050 um, in the fives, 596 for Pavetta against this A's lineup. The A's are a mess. Nobody wants them. Now they're talking about making a deal with Sacramento to play in Sacramento. If you've ever been to Sacramento, by the way, a oh, horrible city. You don't no, want to well, do that's it. That's so untrue, Kyle. Oh, it's <laughs> terrible. It's Wonderful the worst. Place. I've spent plenty of time there. Awful. The Costco is okay. That's 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 all it's got is the Costco. But for me, I'm Red Sox double result here. It's at plus 110. The money line on the run line is at 155 in the first five. Again, it's this is all the math here. The run line's at 120, so I'm getting the 30 cents on the double result at plus 110. I think Pavetta most threw him here. I don't even mind the Pavetta strikeout prop. I don't know what that number is yet, if, if the number's right there. And Ross Stripling. What's Ross Stripling going to do? I, actually, Ross Stripling's a very nice person. His family loves him at Thanksgiving. Um, he's obviously got talent. You see what I'm doing here. I don't want to jinx him into throwing a no hitter, but B dub, what does the model say here? Red Sox A's. Well, the model wholeheartedly agrees with you, Kyle. And, uh, I think that, you know, for me, it's a great play. Uh, I've got a price at minus two Oh six full game. And some of these numbers on Pavetta are super surprising to me. Uh, yeah. if you look, you know, strikeout, you know, who would have thought this strikeout percentage, 36.5%, oh. BBK 0.17. And if that's not enough, pitching plus 97th percentile and hard hit percentage, a uh, hard hit percentile, 96 percentile, 7.5 hard hits per nine. So he's got it all going. And I think if it gets late early, uh, and it will get late early because this is a day game. Uh, you've got your uh, your your bullpen, I think, advantage here. I've got the, the yeah. uh, Red Sox bullpen at Penton Baseball uh, compared to the Oakland bullpen, 27th in baseball. So, uh, you know, I might even actually I'm not going to make a live play on it, but definitely going to going to dip into uh, the betting account on this one, Kyle. I think it's yeah, we play. don't get a lot of B Dub live betting plays, do I'm just starting to realize that. I think I played Click Kyle it. about maybe maybe one, possibly two live bets uh, in, in mm. the three years I've been here. I just I feel like when I have the card down, I, what what I want to do, what I strive to do on this show is bring my best play to the show. You know, Bet US is is a great company to work for. I want to give them my best and so I do that. And sometimes I think the live betting, you get a little emotional on that, Kyle. I think that's fair. Well, we're having some fun, you know. And the, or and look, we have a ton of smart people in the chat box, and I'm, you know, I'm uh, I'm lucky enough to get the best seat in the house and work with two smart people every day that see things that I don't see. So if there's something that I don't see, I go like, you know, the Jackson Chirio stolen base. Well, hey, that's absolutely so. It's okay, you know, it's okay not just to be the old guy resting on your laurels here. Usually this is a young man Wednesday, you know, we'll still call it young man Wednesday. So we got to be a little flexible. Oh, I will admit that I think that that is probably the best live bet in the history of the show was the stolen base at five to mm -hmm. one. And I was tempted on that one, but uh, it was still like a first, first day of the, 
of the season. But that was a great play. It goes in the yeah. it goes in the MLB Show Hall of Fame. I got plenty of time to top it. And our guy Fezzik is in here, and he says Boston parlayed the over eight looks good and correlated. I completely agree. Um, can certainly see runs here. The problem is you're really going to need Boston to shell Stripling, right? Because Pavetta really does. To me, he just profiles really, really well against this lineup. Any thoughts on this game, Kenny? Uh, I think you, you can just bet double result against the A's every game of the season, and you'll probably finish the season up money. Yeah, yeah, especially if you're getting plus money. I was just happy yeah. it was in the. I was just happy I was getting plus money on it. I really like how Pavetta profiles and um, Ross Stripling. I'm I'm trying to use my words carefully here because if Ross Stripling throws a no hitter this afternoon, you're gonna have to send you know do an emergency watch, come to my house and and check on me because things could be getting ugly over here. But for purposes of the show, we're locking in for me. My second double result of the day, I'm going to take the Red Sox here at plus 110 over those hapless triple A's. Let's head to the next game on our docket, 927, 928. We've got Carlos Rodon and the Yankees at minus 107, Merrill Kelly and the D-backs at minus 103, total of eight and a half flat across the board. All right, Kenny, I saw this play, and there's not a lot of meat on the bone for this play for what you're no. playing here, but but I like the cojones. I like the cojones, and when a win is a win— Tell me what you like here, Yankees, Diamondbacks. It's a, it's a stupid play from a stupid man, but <laughs> it, it, it's kind of like the logic with Harper yesterday. You saw that he was 0 for 11, and you're like, all right, well, he's naturally going to hit three home runs here. Um, I, dude, I, I I never bet home run props the short. Except for Nick Castellanos. I'm except, for Nick Cast- except for Nick Castellanos Friday, when whatever. he's just on the cross. I got, I'll, I'll stand by that one. But uh, Yeah, yeah. Look, for over the last three years, Judge has averaged a home run every like 2.75 games or something absurd, like video game numbers. Right. Yet six games into the season, he hasn't hit one yet. He is taking Merrill, Ke- Merrill Kelly to Mars today. Aaron Judge to hit a home run. I think it's like two to one. It's so bad. It's two to one. And that's, a, that's a tough home run pr- price to take. I'm, t- I'm taking tough. it. Ju- Judge goes yard today. I mean, if that was like plus three fifty, I'm all over it. But I, oh god, I don't know if I could do the two to one. It was two. Um, it, was, it was. It was two fifty when I locked it in, and it was two. It was steamed to two hundred by the time the show started. But you know what? I'm 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 standing by it. I'm not crossing it at all. Judge is hitting one to Pluto. I I love it, and uh, Gaston is due. Absolutely due. Do you not agree, Kenny? That he looks like Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. He okay. literally is. That's it. That's a good pull. He absolutely does. Yeah, yeah. I, I love old Gaston there. Crazy um, old Maurice. Yeah, crazy old Maurice. It's my favorite Disney movie. Full disclosure. Number one, Beauty and the Beast. Number two, Lion King. Number three, uh, and a shocker, Cinderella. And that's usually when I. You know, and partying. God, we're, but, on the, we're, uh, on the, we're on the same page here a lot, man. Donatello and Beauty and the Beast is my favorite Disney movie as well. Belle is the go to the Disney princesses. Argue with the wall. What are we talking about? Absolutely. B Dub, what does the model say here? A decent pitching matchup. I know Rodon, we're still waiting to get the best version of Rodon, which might have been two years ago with the Giants. Uh, what do you think here, Kelly? Kelly Rodon, Yankees D backs. Well, I think that. Uh... Uh, Arizona should be priced about minus 116. You know, it's interesting. I think it is it Rodon or Rodone. I, I, I was under the impression that it's Rodone, and which is which is good mm. because you can call him Rodon't. And he hasn't mm. been he has been Rodon't uh, since his uh, debut with the Yankees. But you look at his numbers, and it, it's it's kind of perplexing. And I think we talked about the Hall of Fame bet that Kenny made the other day. Well, I bet Rodon against the the Royals last year on the show. Yeah, it was part of a parlay, and that might be a Hall of Shame a bet. Uh, he he be allowed, I think it was 10 runs, didn't record an out, but his numbers look good. So his numbers look good again today. You look at the uh, strikeout percentage, both pitchers identical, 26.8 adjusted, uh, 81st percentile. Uh, and then if you look uh, uh, BBK, Rodone, you would think, you know, when you watch this guy pitch, you're like, guy, this guy, he's struggling. He, sw- he was sweating. Gosh, he just almost... Almost made me sweat watching him pit against the Astros. Uh, but his BBK is not horrible. It's league average at 0.38. Uh, 
I think offensively, the teams are certainly comparable. Uh, the Yankees a little bit better offensively, uh, eighth in baseball, uh, than the D-backs for me, tenth in baseball. But I think one of the things that's interesting, and I think that we should always look at whether the roof's going to be open or not in Arizona, uh, particularly uh, when we're playing home run props. And I think for this in this situation, and Kenny's play looks good because they're going to have the roof open, which gives it, a, I think it's like 1.2 runs extra uh, per game. So... Be definitely rooting for. I'm going to be rooting for the Diamondbacks, but I'll also be rooting for uh, for Kenny's Kenny's prop play uh, to hit as well. Yeah, I like to have the clips of the show where someone says something that's very rare to happen, and you know, it's just good. It's good. It's good publicity. Uh, I want to address this in here. Alpha Sports Betting says "Under the Sea" is a banger, and while I agree, the music in Little Mermaid is great. I'm sorry, but Ariel just bugs me. So we have a princess who can do whatever the hell she wants in the ocean, but she's got to whine the entire time about having the handsome. It's like, get over yourself. Your life is fine. It's not like you're a prisoner under the sea. You're number two. You're the number two person in charge. Like, quit bitching and live your life. Just leave us alone up here. We don't want to hear your whining. We don't want to hear. We got plenty of Taylor Swifts up here to sing the sad breakup songs and the love songs. Get the hell out of here, Ariel. Am I, am I missing something here? Poor Flounder, man. The original friend zone. You got friend zone. Yes. The, the moment oh. that movie started. Yes, Flounder. Yeah, it'll never happen, buddy. And then and then she just loses the fin completely and gets legs now. Ariel. Ariel is the Pam of the office of the undersea. Just very annoying and a horrible person. Um, <laughs> I digress. For purposes of the show, Kenny, Kevin some Cajona is locking in the Aaron Judge home run, and that's sitting there at 2-1. to one. Uh, Next game on the docket, 9-17, 9-18. We've got Logan Allen and those Guardians at plus 144. George Kirby and the Mariners sitting at minus 159. Total of 7.5 with some juice to the under at minus 115. All right, B-Dub, it's time to start getting into the base winner parlay. We know they got uh, they got they got snaked, really, in a close game. A White Sox pulled away late. Uh, Lo- Lopez and Crochet, a couple former relievers for the White Sox, pitched really well in starting World Crochet has been just something to start the year. Uh, but what do you got here, Guardians and Mariners base winner? This is a game where it was hard for me to come up with the, uh, the counterpart to the Dodgers who is the second leg of the base winner parlay. But this is the first leg. Uh, I've got Seattle price at minus 183. They're in the market at minus 160. And I think it's a more of a play against Logan P. Allen. And this is a true story, guys. There's actually two Logan Allens uh, in Major League Baseball. And so you have to distinguish. And on the chart, it's the only guy, uh, I, I believe, in, in baseball that has his middle name uh, on the chart. So Logan P. Allen... Uh, you look at his numbers, and they're nothing great. You look at a 22% strikeout rate, and that's better than average in the 52nd percentile. Uh, but stuff plus numbers in the 20th percentile, pitching plus numbers uh, lower as well. And then if you look at the BBK comparison, Kirby 0.14, that's elite BBK uh, versus a 0.45 for Logan T. Allen. And then if you look at the offenses, I do like Seattle's offense a little bit better. In fact, they're top 10 in baseball at number nine. And then the bullpens are, are, are comparable, but I do like Seattle's a little bit. So I'm going to make Seattle the first play of the base winner parlay. Uh, and then I'm going to put him uh, time with, with the Dodgers. And we'll talk about that game in just a second. You're, you're sleeping. You're, you're sleeping on the World Series champs, Cleveland Guardians, man. Coming oh, out four boy. and two. Bold move going yep. against my Guardians. Yeah, and and look, the Guardians, I have a special place in my heart because I love Major League and Major League Two, obviously, and and the Jack Parker trade is one that will go down in history for me, but uh, I just don't understand how they score runs. It just bugs me. The Naylor brothers in there, one of them can hit, the other one can't hit the broadside of a barn. Just The whole thing's weird, but the Guardians do find way. They're a scrappy team. They kind of remind me of the – they're like an American League version of the Giants. They You don't understand how they win, but they do, and um, that's sort of the Guardians. What do you got – what do you think about this one? By my numbers, Kirby, 641 weighted OPS here. When you look at Logan T. Allen, I did – honest to God, had no idea there was two Logan Allens. This, that's news to me right now. Uh, Logan T. Allen, it's a 771. So advantage here, Mariners, by my numbers. What do you got on this one, Kenny? I, I got nothing. I just – it, it, it's nothing to do with you know some of the uh, psychotic features that I fired out here, man. I'm just I'm just scared of this Guardians team. I lo- I love Seattle. I was I was with you. I think we took them to win the division. 
Um, and if you like Seattle, you should like them in a spot where Kirby's on the bump. But I don't know. I just got a bad, I got a weird feeling about this game and this Guardians team. They don't they don't strike out ever. They just manufacture runs right. in the weirdest way. Everybody it's been gets, going on for years. Everybody gets on base and. You know, Logan Allen flashed it a little bit a little bit last year. I, I don't really know how good this kid is. I just I'm staying away from Guardians games because I don't know how to handicap this team. Yeah, and, and you make a great point about the strikeouts. And this has been for the last three seasons. Cleveland and Washington and Houston are usually the three teams up there that just don't strike out. And you, you know, teams like Washington that would surprise you, teams like Cleveland that would surprise you, but they're routinely one and two in terms of fewest strikeouts. Base one, did you have something to add on here? Because you really did blow my. Where's the other Logan Allen? What, what, what the hell is the other one? He he plays, I think, for the Rockies now. Um, but but he pit, I think he made a, a, a he pitched in in a in an actual uh, big league game. It it really fouled me up, and so like I I wouldn't even play Logan T. Allen because I didn't know if I was getting the right guy. But I I, I believe I got the right guy in here. Mm. Uh, I think the other Logan Allen. I think the other Logan Allen's worse. So if I don't, then. Well, I, maybe I think he's in, I think he's in the D-backs farm system currently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it reminds yeah, that me of that show. Uh, oh, it was on years ago. You guys may not. Well, Kyle, you probably will. Uh, th- th- I hate that you said Coach. that. And the guy, the yeah. actor there, Craig T. Had, Nelson. What are you talking yes, about? Yes, exactly. I, I'm I'm not very good with actors, but but I remember that that guy had a middle initial that was the star of that that show. Yeah, yeah, Craig T. Nelson, and I aged myself horribly there, but absolutely, I used to watch Coach. They would move that show around quite a bit. There was a brief time where it was right before the Fresh Prince of Bel Air and Blossom on Mondays. And again, we're going back to 1991. Oh boy, I'm getting old. It's very very depressing. But for purposes of the show. The first leg of the base winner parlay today. Base winner is backing George Kirby and the Mariners at home against the Guardians. Last game on the docket. Then we'll get into your questions. So get your questions into the chat box. We'll do our best to end. I haven't gotten one love question yet. I haven't had to be the love doctor once this year. And I'm starting, like, do you guys all just have healthy relationships? Because I've never had one my entire life. My son and his girlfriend, they're 19, and I swear they have a healthier relationship than me than I have ever had in my 42 years on this earth. And I'm pretty sure that's my fault because I'm trying to find hot girls and 94 Camrys. But nonetheless, I digress. Let's head to the next game, 909-910. We've got the rookie Kyle Harrison and the Giants at plus 185. Corby's man crush, Tyler Glass now, and the Dodgers at minus 215 with some juice to the under 8.5 there. At minus 115. All right, Kenny, let's start with you here. Glass now, Harrison. Uh, this kind of does feel like an under to me, but the dot is there some is there anyone other than Mookie Betts who's the MVP so far this year? Mookie Betts has been absolutely unbelievable. We need the Dodgers to lose, though, if we have any hope of the Orioles getting to 10 wins before him. I, I, I know. Uh, I think the Dodgers have what? They've scored five runs in every game so far this season. And yeah. the, uh, shout out to like, this again, obviously, essentially shout out to Bet US, best sports book on planet Earth. Uh, every single sports book in the world was hanging Mookie to hit a home run last night at like plus 600, which is the, the craziest thing ever. It's the, it, I put up two bets yesterday and Mookie home run was one of them. So shout out Mookie bets. Um, I'm worried for my my boy, best friend, Kyle Harrison, rookie of the year pick, because again, I, I think he's got some crazy stuff. I just, like, I don't think prime Nolan Ryan could get through this Dodgers lineup right now. It's it's just unfair. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. The Dodgers just continue to score runs. You're going to have to mash if you're going to beat them. Now you got Glass now on the mound. Is this one of those trap games where the Giants find a way, or does or, or does Corby's hero, Corby's man, is Corby Corby would go on a date with Glass now, right? And I I would support it, fully support it. I, I would pay for it, as a matter of fact. Uh, but what do you think here, Dodgers Giants? Well, you know, he's not on the show today, but maybe he's in the chat box. He could provide us the the numbers on his extension and rise. Uh, he probably has those memorized. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and play the Dodgers uh, as the second leg of the base winner parlay. I've got a price at minus three twenty three. Glasnow has been not very good uh, in in his first two starts. Uh, in fact, his base winner ERA uh, in twenty twenty four is five point five three. Uh, but I'm gonna give him a pass if you look at his last hundred and fifty. Uh, play to parents strikeout percentage. It is 33.2 percent. It's hard to ignore. Uh, 0.21 uh, BBK and uh, also hard hit percentile. 
uh, pretty good, too, in, in the 74th percentile there. Offensively, I think we just have a huge edge. Uh, you know, I talk about the Braves all the time, but the Dodgers, number two in baseball uh, versus versus uh, the Giants, who I have number 18. And then I like the, the Dodger bullpen as well. So if it gets late, I, I think we have an edge there. So for all those reasons, going to make the Dodgers the second leg of the base winner parlay. And when it wins, it's going to be plus 136, guys. Ooh, I think I'm giving you an extra three cents here at plus 139. But uh, we're back. As someone says Corby Glass now, he should change his name. So if those two, does Glass now take Corby's last name? Does he become Tyler Craig or does Corby become Corby Glass now? I'm not sure which one sounds better. Do you hyphenate it? You know, I, I don't know what Glass you do. now Craig. Glass now Craig. I like that. That, that really rolls off the tongue. Um, oh, God, there's jokes for that and the whole thing there. We're just going to leave all that alone for purposes of this show. The second leg of the base winner parlay. He's locking in the Dodgers along with the Mariners, and that sits at plus 139. Uh, Ed Bluss says Tyler Cheeks, because we do call Corby Corby Cheeks our weatherman here. Tyler Cheeks, now that now that's a name. I, I like some. Uh, you could see Tyler Cheeks buying a home on Selling Sunset. So, uh, you know, I could see all of that tying tying together in one full swoop. Let's get to our Q&A here. That was well done, we to- Kyle. I've got to give you props <laughs> on that one. Thank you for that. Some, you know, they like they say a broken clock is right twice a day. You know what I mean? So sometimes I shoot and I score most, of, you know, I'm probably shooting about 38% or something like that. Before we get into all the questions here and we got some good ones, I wanted to go to Kenny because he has an interesting look, I know, on the Astros Blue Jays. And uh, it's kind of a lot of fun. These are kind of bets we like to do for fun. Uh, what, do you th- what do you got here, Astros Blue Jays? Yeah, I had, a, I had a lot of fun with these last year. I hit a couple of uh, weird parlays with these. Um, I, I, ideally, I'd like to wait until lineups come out, but if he's not in the starting lineup, it's going to void, so it doesn't really matter all that much here. But I'm going to get a little weird. I'm going to get a little bit weird here. Bo Bichette to strike out in his first at bat. I think it's like plus 280 on, on some books if you want to shop it around here. Uh, he's, it, they're going up against Christian Javier. Bichette is one for six against Javier with five strikeouts. I know it's a small sample size, but hey, it's hit five out of six times and you're giving me plus 280 for it. I will just shut up and take my money. I'm going to bet on that. It's getting a, uh, oh, I, I see that you added Kyle Harrison to throw a no hitter at minus 120. Yes. That's very, that's, that cannot be the price, right? That's, 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 that can't be right. If he actually throws a no hitter, it's probably like, 30 to one or something insane, 50 to one, 80 to one. It's the Dodgers. Usually I've seen a, like you'll never get like a pregame offer for that. But usually if like a pitcher has a no, no through like three or four innings, you know, some places will offer like a live special and like it pretty much anytime it's offered, I'm going to donate on it because it's just too much fun not to, but give me that live button. Give me the red button. Obichette to, to K in his first at bat plus two sixty five. I think is what it is. I love that. I love that. And it's getting uh, added there. It looks like I don't, I like when things move up there and, and get me distracted. We've got uh, Swolf Dab saying by far Swolf Dab. Yeah, by far the best baseball show on YouTube. I like to read those out loud just to remind everyone that you're watching the uh, best. And we appreciate you guys. It, honestly, it's the way that it is because of the people who watch it. And uh, we're lucky enough to have cool people uh, that watch it and love baseball just like we do. All right, let's get to our first question here. It's from. The Magana boys who like to do these big parlays. And uh, his first question here is, hey, guys, Orioles minus one or Cubs minus one for 5K? What do you think? He always throws a 5K in there to make me nervous for him. You know, he always does that, uh, which I appreciate. Um, Obviously, I took the Orioles double result. I think they're going to do well today if the game plays. And so that's that's the real caveat there. And I believe we have the same situation in Chicago with the Cubs. So both games kind of have a weather risk. In that Cubs game, it's Luke Little, who I know very little about. Maybe you have some numbers on him, base winner. And uh, Cal Quantrill, Luke Little, the worst porn name in baseball, right? That if, you're, if we're doing worst porn names, Luke Little has to be the worst porn name in all of baseball, right? That would be, I think, correct, Kyle. Can we do porn, <laughs> baseball porn names on the show? I, I'm going to have yeah, to run absolutely. that one flagpole. Yeah. But uh, yeah. it, it's definitely entertaining. Um, I forgot, I forgot what the question, no, no, no. He's talking about 
you know, Orioles I, minus okay, one so, or Cubs minus one? Which which one would you prefer? The model. Who's who's I, who does it have favorite? I would more? take. Yeah. Well, you, the model likes the Cubs a lot, but I I didn't even make it a play. That the weather there is like it's going to be snowball city in Chicago. I don't know if it's any better in Baltimore. You know, some of this weather well, stuff is just like. I, we have a live can, update. And, from and, Garrett and, Sween. He's outside of Maryland, close to the ballpark, and he says it's starting to clear up here in Maryland. So that's. Yeah, you know, something. I think you you might it actually might be something that you could win money on if you yeah you know, we got to get together with Corby Cheeks uh, you know maybe mm-hmm. there's a model there the Corby Cheeks model but until then I'm gonna just tread really lightly with either game but if I had to pull the trigger on one I would I would definitely do the Orioles over if, the Cubs if if, yeah. if you need a little bit of a fun fact here I was literally gonna make this joke and then I looked the guy up and uh, it turns out that I was right so uh, if you don't know anything about Luke Little and I didn't until five seconds ago Luke mm-hmm. Little is six eight two twenty of course he is. Of course he is. So now that's like Corby's new favorite pitcher. He loves those tall pitchers who can deal it. I just don't know enough about him to say, yeah, put 5K on them minus one. But I do like the Orioles today. So um, that's probably the way that I would go. But again, it's Cole Reagan's bad weather. So both of those give me a little lemon booty, Gabe. I'm not going to lie. Um, our next question here from Dalton Ligurski. Now, that's a great name. That's a Now, that's a good name. Solid Dalton Ligurski. You know, oh, the Ligurski boys are coming to the bar. I, I love that name for some reason. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, that, uh, yeah, tall pitchers with great extension and rise. We we know, we know. Um, he, he asks Rockies Cubs under. Um, now I'm not sure exactly. Let me see what the total in that game is in the Rockies Cubs. Um, let's see here. Let me get to the National League. I do like how they break it up here for you here at betustv.com slash join. Um, the total sitting at seven, and I know the weather's bad, but you got Cal Quantrill and some guy that I don't know a lot about. I don't know if I can jump on that under. What do you think about that one, Kenny? I, I think my boy Luke, Litter, Luke, Luke Little is going to just mow down this this Rockies team. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, Quantrill stinks. I know nothing about Little. Bad weather. Uh, I just I think if you're unsure, I think there's enough games on the board to get weird with. Just stay away from this one. Agreed. What do you think, B Dub? Especially the weather, like Cubs you, Rockies. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kenny made some good points. You know the vampire movies. The, the I guess the they're afraid of the garlic and the cross. Well, this is what this game kind of conjures mm-hmm. up in my brain. It's like God, it's got this weather that's just awful. You know, it might be Cal Quantrill's best start of the year, but how much are you gonna? Uh, account for that with this the, the weather just looked awful and you know you talk about a hall of shame uh i probably shouldn't have put that braves game out la- last night gosh it just looked cold and they all had i don't know if you watched any of that kyle they all had uh hoods over there so they looked yeah. like they were robbing a bank and they uh, had it along with doing- the phillies reds game too they and it, that's when um Alec Bohm made a play from third base early in that game. It was an amazing play. It looked like he stumbled and then he just hoofed it over and he threw out, uh, I think it was Fraley who can run or Spencer Steer was one of those two. And I, I was like, wait, are they wearing a mask? Is there like a COVID thing that I didn't know about going on? Are we going back to this? And then it turns out they're wearing those bank robber masks and playing baseball. I don't even know how the hell you do it. So shout out to them. But uh, yeah, that game, Cubs Rockies for me, complete, complete stay away. Uh, our next question from our guy, Damian Edwards, and I like this question, and he gets to the heart of me. He gets me. Thoughts on Rangers double results at plus 185 against the Rays. It's Savali and Eovaldi, and I do have Eovaldi profiling just slightly better by the smallest margin, 685 to 696 in terms of weighted OPS. But the Rangers, I know, as young back in the lineup, I know he was – Banged that he got hit in the wrist or yeah, something he's, like he, that. He's out for like six weeks. Yeah, so that when you start taking things away from that lineup, it gets dicey. But uh, plus one eighty five, I think it could do a lot worse than a, than that Rangers team. What do you think about this one, base winner? Well, I think it's a good opportunity to play the other team, guys. Uh, Tampa mm-hmm. Bay, I've got priced at minus two seventeen. You know, the strikeout percentage uh, for Eovaldi is is not good. Seventeen point seven percent, twenty second percentile. And compare this, this has been the surprise really of the season for me with Savali's strikeout percentage. It's sitting at 32.6, and I just can't, I mean, I can look at the numbers and I can recalculate the numbers, and it's 32.6, but for me, subjectively, it's hard to 
hard to get a, adjusted to that. Uh, one of the things I did want to talk about, uh, because I did some research on this, I think it's important, uh, how the Rays do during the, the weekdays. I think they've got a distinct advantage uh, playing at, at Tropicana. It just such a unique park, and then add to the, you know, early in the day uh, to the sight lines there. And it's interesting, they are 12-3 and three in the last two years, weekday games during the day. Uh, and so I think that, the, you know, while I'm not a huge trend guy, I think that there's some substance behind that trend. Uh, so I'm playing Tampa Bay on the card. Uh, it wasn't quite good enough to make the cut on the show. Uh, you know, Texas does have that, that explosive offense. Uh, but one of the things I thought was interesting, and maybe I can throw it out to the chat box, who does have the best weekday day ball record uh, in baseball over the last uh, two years? That's uh, interesting. I got to shout out our guy, Ed Blust, because I wasn't even sure I could say this. I had to look it up. But the best porn name to ever play in the major leagues, he played for the New York Giants back in 1936, Johnny Dickshot. That's his name. And that's a real player. That is a real player. I am looking at his baseball card right now. He looks like a Johnny Dickshot. Let's just put it that way. Uh, but uh, great name. Great find by Ed. How the how hell you, Ed Blust knew? How do you this? Like, I don't know. I, well, I'm just looking at him, and it looks like a Johnny Dick shot to me. You know what I mean? I, I just pull up his card, beat up, pull it up, look at his thing. But Johnny Dick shot, uh, look at his go thing? all in. What thing? <laughs> look at his baseball card. His baseball oh. card. I meant nice call. Um, any thoughts on this game, the Rangers uh, Rays game here, Kenny? It's it's an interesting one, but I I I don't mind uh, the plus one eighty five on the Rangers. B Dub likes the Rays on the other side, but uh, it's interesting here. I just you know Rangers without Young. And two pretty damn good pitchers. It's just it's for me it's it's coin flip ish. Gun to my head, I lean Rangers just because I I'm still not all that all that bullish in the Rays, but I, I'm just I want nothing right. to do with this game. Yeah, yeah. And, and Swift Dab says we need this data, and you're right. And Swift Dab says big data there. You're on the money with that trend base winner. So uh, thank you to the chat box for helping us out. Thank you. We have 163 people watching live right now. We invite you to hit the like button. That really helps us. But Look, we know there's college basketball going on and M NBA is getting into the playoffs. So you guys making us a part of your day this early, it's it's humbling. We appreciate you. Thank you very, very much. Let's head to our next question from Trevor Van and Boss Jones. Cardinals plus 132 at the Padres. Musgrove has been bad and his numbers aren't good. Cardinals pitching been suspect, but their bats have shown up this series. So on paper, right, Kenny, it's Musgrove against Zach Thompson. And you go, oh, well, Musgrove absolutely has the advantage here but he's right musgrove looks a little bit rough early in the year um cardinals at plus money i, I don't necessarily hate that what do you think about that one kenny i don't mind just the, the, the fade musgrove um if you want to go like you know, i've seen a lot of musgrove under k's musgrove under total outs i just i don't really know what to think with zach thompson i think zach thompson's on the bump for the cardinals sometimes he has it sometimes he doesn't i, I Cardinals are a team that I just feel like I never have a good pulse for. I don't bet on them a lot, so I feel like I don't follow them a lot. And I, I just I, – I don't really go near them all that much. But I don't mind if, you, if you're going for a side here. Cardinals at plus money feels it feels pretty decent. Vita, what does the model say here? We got – I got to double-check these names. We got some, the chat box – you know, know the thing is, I wanted to let – me, let me – let, let's talk about this game, and then I'll, I'll, I'll go aside here. Yes. But uh, – as far as how, the yeah. way I have it priced, minus 123, Kenny uh, brings up a good point, and I, I would agree with him. You know, it's hard to get a pulse on this uh, St. Louis Cardinal team. In fact, yeah. uh, I was so bullish on them last year, and you know how that turned out. But uh, you're looking at the right. strikeout percentage, and it's surprising for both guys. In fact, Thompson has the greater strikeout percentage over the last 150 plate appearances, slightly at 22.4 to Musgrove's 22. 2.3 but uh so for me it's a no play and i but i can i can uh, agree with trevor and wanted to thank everybody because that's a great question and and uh the chat box is kyle you're 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 right on as, as far as that goes it's it is very a, a fun chat box and mm -hmm. and great handicapping occurs as well so two things that i like to do yeah um and but but talking about you know that the the, uh, the johnny dick shot and that is a real oh. name but there's one yeah. called dick Hole. And so I clicked mm -hmm. on the card to see the guy's picture. And gosh, you don't want to know what came up, Kyle. It was awful. <laughs> don't type in Dick. You type in Dick Pole baseball player. Make sure you're very, very careful where I, you could have some interest, especially if you're married and you share a computer. You, you got to be careful there. The other one, I'm going to pronounce this a certain way. 
Uh, there's also a player named Rusty Kuntz. We'll call it R- Rusty Kuntz. Um, you could read the spelling and decide how you want to, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and say he's a Kuntz. <laughs> <laughs> just for uh, purposes of the show let's get to our next question here we got time for a couple more and then we'll get you guys out of here on a tuesday uh another question in that game the musgrove under six and a half k's i think we all agree that's not a terrible spot here's where when you have a guy though like musgrove's pedigree who we've seen have a lot of success in major league baseball you just a couple bad starts do they get in the pitching coach tweaks a little thing next thing you know they come out and they're their old self so that'd be the one concern but i don't mind the under six and a half here go ahead be done yeah kyle you know i wanted to, to kind of expand on this a little bit because it's a good question and i think when you're looking at like a significant drop off with these pitchers uh, i think it's a good idea to, to look at their velocity and one of the things uh with musgrove is he had he didn't pitch in august or uh september of last year but the velocity is still pretty close to where it was. Uh, you could say it was around an average of 92.7, good radio station, uh, last year. In fact, it is an average of 92.7 when you combine both years. But his first two starts, the velocity was 92.3, 92.2. So very close. Could, you could chalk it up to a, to a radar. You know, There's a little bit of play in those radar readings. So I don't necessarily think... Uh, it's a stuff issue. It could just be he's trying to get adjusted because uh, it has been a while since he's pitched uh, in, in a real Major League Baseball game. And I don't want to penalize him too much for, you know, that that, that first bad game against against the Dodgers. It was his first start in forever. He was on a pitch count in Korea. Like, it's just – I'm okay with just scrapping that. And then, yeah, he didn't look great against against the Giants, but it wasn't terrible as well. His pitch count got up to 84, so – I'm guessing if he's pitching well, they probably let him get into the 90s today. So uh, I, yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I'm a little less excited about the Musgrove unders. I don't know what it is. Like, I just I think if he's if he's dealing early, man, I think he's going to have a longer leash than he had last week. Yeah, listen, I love strikeout props. It's one of my favorite things to do. But for me, it's too early. I need to get some of this rust off, see how long – let them kind of get into – early midseason form where they're not being pulled early they're not watching their arms where they're just le- and i want to know what these teams are how they're seeing it who's striking out who's not so for me i mean if you want to sprinkle a little here or there you see like you see an advantage like uh the imanaga five and a half the other day that you know if the game played we realized would, would probably go over that's fine but for me it takes a little bit of time for strikeout props to settle in. That's just how I approach it. Um, personally, that's all of our questions. We appreciate all the questions we appreciate in the chat box. Don't forget to hit that like button. Um, Ed Bluff says, I bet no other baseball show anywhere has discussions about porn names. MLB show, best show on the planet. We appreciate you guys. We like to have a little fun around here as well. We got a lot of shows and a lot of games this year. Let's go over our best bets and get you out of here on a Tuesday. Mo Harris says, Kenny looks like he smells good. I agree. Mo <laughs> Harris, by the way, will, Mo Harris will give you a lot. Like, I got complimented all year last year for Mo. I've yet to hear how good looking I am this year, but it's coming. I already know that. Uh, but <laughs> com- that might be the comment of the day that is absolutely wonderful so the base winner parlay today seattle and the dodgers at plus 139 i'm on a couple double results baltimore at plus 115 and the red Sox at plus 110 kenny's got aj puck oh six plus k's at plus 118 today in that game against the angels aaron judge to hit a home run he's He's biting down on the less meat on that bone there. It's a lean, it's a lean bone, but Aaron Judge is absolutely due at two to one. And of course, the live bet, the fun one here, Bo Bichette to strike out in his first at bat. Is that correct? First at bat strikeout. Yep. And that's sitting at plus two eighty. That's our show for today. Again, thank you all so much. We'll be back tomorrow, 11 Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. Don't forget to hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave us your comments if you're watching this show later. Stay tuned. We've got our NBA guys. We've got college basketball. We've got soccer. All Tons of great stuff here at BetUSTV. So head over to BetUSTV.com slash join as well. From myself, B-Dub, and Kenny, have a great day. And, of course, good luck on all your future wagers. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up below and make sure to hit that subscribe bell so you never miss a show. For more content like this across all major sports, head to betustv.com. Best of luck with your bets.